All right, next we're going to talk about integrals of trig functions and particularly how the natural log function can help us find some of these integrals. So we're just going to start off with a proof uh, of these three right here and discover what the integral of tangent x, uh, cotangent x, and secant x is. So for tangent x, the first thing we want to do is change tangent x into sine x over cosine x. So we're going to rewrite this as the integral of sine x over cosine x dx. Now in looking at this, we have a quotient, so we're going to use our u substitution here. And we're going to let u equal cosine x, and u prime then is going to be negative sine x dx. Okay, so we can see here that we have our cosine x on the bottom, uh, but we need a negative sine x dx, and right now we have a positive sine x. So what we need to do is make this be negative, and then to keep it balanced, we're going to put a negative on the outside. Now we really have the negative integral of u prime over u. And this right here, the integral of u prime over u, is simply natural log. So this equals the negative natural log of the absolute value of u plus c. And all we do is substitute cosine x back in for u, and so this equals negative natural log absolute value of cosine x plus c. Okay, so that is the integral of tangent, and you know, it actually becomes a natural log function. All right, for our next example, we have the integral of cotangent x dx. And we're going to use the same type of idea where we switch this over and make it the integral of cosine x over sine x dx. And we need to choose u in the denominator, which is sine x. And u prime, then, is cosine x dx. And so if I look at this one, I already have it in the form of u prime over u, because we have cosine x. And so we know that this is just going to be the natural log of the absolute value of sine x plus c. Okay, so the integral of cotangent x is the natural log of sine x. All right, and let us see, we want to find the integral of secant x, and this one's a little bit tougher. So the first thing I want to do is multiply top and bottom by secant x plus tan x over secant x plus tangent x. Okay, so we're really multiplying by 1, and that's going to change our integral. So we now have the integral of secant squared x plus secant x tan x over secant x plus tan x. And this is dx. So here, we're going to let u equal secant x plus tan x, and then u prime is actually going to be, well, the derivative of secant is secant tan, so that's secant x tan x, and then the derivative of tangent x is secant squared x. Okay, so here's u prime. And if we look at our integral now, we have secant squared x plus secant x tan x, which is u prime. Oh, and we have a dx here. So this is already in the form u prime over u. So our final answer is going to be the natural log of the absolute value of secant x plus tangent x plus c. 
So it would have been a little bit hard to figure out that this is what you needed to multiply by, but hopefully you can see that it does work out and that the integral of secant x is the natural log of secant x plus tangent x right there. So this rounds out our integrals of the six basic trig functions. Sine and cosine we had already known, so it was negative cosine and positive sine, and I just proved to you that the integral of tangent u du is negative natural log of the absolute value of cosine u, and I proved the integral of cotangent u du is the natural log of sine u plus c, and I also proved uh, secant, okay, so the integral of secant u is natural log of secant u plus tangent u, and likewise, uh, we could have done another similar thing with cosecant, and we would have found that the integral of cosecant u was the negative natural log of cosecant u plus cotangent u plus c. So hopefully you can see the relationship between tangent and cotangent. The signs change, and then it flips over, so it's cosine or sine. And the same thing with secant and cosecant. The signs change, and then we have to use cosecant instead of secant, and then cotangent instead of tangent. All right, so let's use these integrals now to evaluate some of these indefinite integrals. <laughs> I should say in. Okay, so if I'm looking at this, the tangent of 2x dx, we can see that 2x should get grouped together, and that really becomes our u. So here u equals 2x, and du is going to be simply 2 dx. So you can see that we're missing a 2 here. So we're going to add it on the inside and put a 1 half on the outside. And so now let's use change of variables. So we're going to have 1 half times the integral of tangent u du. And now we can use this integral right up here. So it's going to be negative 1 half of the natural log of the absolute value of cosine u plus c, and then let's replace u with 2x, and so we get negative 1 half times the natural log of the absolute value of cosine of 2x plus c. Final answer. Okay, so go ahead and find what u is, make sure you have du present, okay, because we need u du, and then integrate and then substitute back in for u. All right, so for letter b, what do you think u should equal? Well, it looks like u is going to be 1 half x, which means du is going to be 1 half dx. So what are we missing? Well, we're missing a 1 half on the inside, meaning we're missing a 2 on the outside. So let's change our variables now. So it'll be 2 times the integral of cosecant u du. And now let's apply this integral right here. So it equals negative 2 times the natural log of the absolute value of cosecant u plus cotangent u plus c. And now let's go ahead and substitute in for our u's right here, so u equals 1 half x. So our final answer is negative 2 times the natural log of the absolute value of cosecant of 1 half x plus cotangent of 1 half x plus c. Final answer. All right, let's take a look at letter c. So here, I would let u equal, well, probably the denominator, because I don't see anything in with the x's, so when you see a quotient, try the denominator. So let's go 1 plus 2 cosine x, and let's find du, okay, which is going to be negative 2 sine x dx. And I don't see negative 2 sine x dx, I see 3 sine x dx. So what we're going to do in this case is actually 
bring the 3 to the outside. Okay, so that'll be gone. And then multiply by negative 2 on the inside. And then multiply by negative 1 half on the outside. Okay, so bring your constant multiple outside and then give us a negative 2 and a negative 1 half. And so let's rewrite this. We have negative 3 halves times the integral of negative 2 sine x over 1 plus 2 cosine x dx. And now you can see we do have u prime, right? Because du and u prime are the same thing. So we have u prime over u. So we have negative 3 halves times the integral of u prime over u. So very important, just because you have trig in the problem doesn't necessarily mean you're going to use one of the six basic trig functions. Okay? You might still be able to use u substitution and have your trig drop out completely. So notice the difference between the two problems. Here we had okay, u inside the tangent function and here we don't. Okay, so this is going to be negative 3 halves times the natural log of the absolute value of u plus c. And then we'll just substitute u back in. So we get negative 3 halves times the natural log of the absolute value of 1 plus cosine x plus c. Final answer. Okay, moving on to letter D. Here I see 1 plus secant x squared. So here, let's try to let uh, u be the inside of our composite function. So we're going to let u equal 1 plus secant x. Okay, and let's go ahead and find du. Okay, derivative of 1 is nothing. The derivative of secant is secant x tangent x dx. Now do you see du anywhere in here? I don't, and we can't add in anything with a multiple. So if we have no du, we can't use our nice power rule of the integral of u squared. Okay, so what are we going to do instead? Well in this case, let's actually apply this square. We're going to get well, 1 squared, which is 1, plus 2 times 1 times secant x, which is 2 secant x, plus secant x squared. So we'll rewrite that as secant squared x dx. And now what we can do is evaluate each one of these integrals separately. Okay, So we do have the integral of 1 dx plus the integral, and we'll take a 2 on the outside here, of secant x dx plus the integral of secant squared x dx. Okay, so let's take the integral of 1 dx, which is just going to be x, and then plus 2 times the integral of secant x dx, which is just right here. So it's natural log of the absolute value of secant x plus tan x. And notice our u was x, so du is just dx, meaning we can just directly substitute there. And then plus the integral of secant squared dx. Well, it's not up here, but you recall that the integral of secant squared is just tangent x. And then we have plus c. Okay, so hopefully letters c and d can show you some possibilities, and our basic integration techniques are still the same. We try to get it always to the power rule if we can. If we can't, then we actually go ahead and apply the exponent. And then from there, you can see we have three functions that we can integrate separately, and each of them we know the integration rules for. So here is the final answer there.
And we now have more integrals in our arsenal to use in calculus. All right, so that has been integrals of trig functions.